walls or staying on the right side of the fence. And uh, this is an interesting thought. Um, once again, as we turn our Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, not long ago, a man was telling me, he was saying, you know, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit, Pastor, uh, about, uh, about walls. It seems like Baptists, Bible believers, build walls. And uh, rather than trying to reach out and try to, uh, to fellowship with these people, uh, you guys exclude people who are homosexual. You uh, don't reach out to the transgender people. And he said, I just want to tell you about us. Uh, we've learned something different. We fellowship with them. We sit down with them. And obviously, you don't love these people. You're building a wall is basically what he said. You're building a wall. And uh, really, in reality, pastor, you ought to be going over there and fellowshipping with the homosexuals uh, rather than uh, trying to uh, condemn them. Uh, you're not trying to love them and reach them. And uh, in other words, he's looking at me, trying to smack, smack and uh, slap me in the face. So the question comes down to, are we building walls or are we standing on the right side of the fence? We're going to read Joshua chapter 1, starting in verse 1, if you'll stand with me for the reading of God's Word. And by the end of the sermon, you'll get it. You'll understand where I'm getting at. And you might not get it now. That's okay. It's the beginning of the sermon. And so Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, we'll start by reading together the first verse, then we'll read every other verse until we get to verse number 9. Ready? Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant. Now, this is where I read. I read the verse number 2, Okay. You read number one, I read verse number two. Every other verse. <laughs> Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses." From the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Now, this is the sermon. It's really simple. Be, God came to Joshua and he said, here, I'm going to command you to do something. This is my word. This is what I want you to do. I gave Moses the law. In other words, Jesus, the Lord, built a wall. He built a fence. He says, here's what I want. Be strong and of good courage. Do what I say. Have not I, com I commanded you? Have not I built this wall? Have not I told you what is right and what's wrong? In other words, we don't build any walls. We're not wall builders. He is. We're not fence builders. He is. So when, when God says something is right, be strong and of good courage and just say, yeah, God's right. Uh, in other words, instead of worrying about the false accusation that we're building a wall, we don't build any walls. He already did build a wall. We're going to stand on the right side of the fence. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, and I love you, Lord. And I believe you're a church that loves you. This sermon, I believe, is needed. Um, sometimes the world comes and begins to make false accusations 
and they'll accuse us of building a wall. And in reality, we don't build walls. We stand on the right side of the fence, stand on the right side of the wall. God, I pray that you help this message be an encouragement, help some people who probably have been discouraged, uh, these attacks on them, they begin to wonder, am I doing right? Am I building a wall? Help them realize they don't have to build a wall you already did. Lord, we love you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are we building a wall or staying on the right side of the fence? Uh, Joshua uh, was commanded by the Almighty God. Joshua, you're going to go over and cross this Jordan. Joshua, you're going to go into the promised land. Joshua, you're going to have a lot of enemies, but be strong and of good courage. I'm with you. I'll help you defeat these enemies. Be strong, Joshua. This is my word. This is what you're going to do. Hey, this is what you need to do. Here's the wall that I've, I, I'm giving you right here, Joshua. I, I commanded Moses as I was with Moses. I am with you. Here's the wall that I'm going to build. And, and this is so important. Uh, be strong, Joshua. We quote often that verse number eight, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's a wall. Uh, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Hey, Joshua, it's not your job to build the wall. It's your job to stand on the, the right side of the fence. Does that make sense? Joshua, it's not your job to have it all worked out. You don't have to worry about the walls of Jericho falling down. Uh, you don't have the power to destroy those walls of Jer Jericho. You don't have the power to defeat that enemy, but I do. God says that. You don't have to worry about all that. And by the way, uh, we're not building a wall. We're staying on the right side of the fence. So we get in the sermon. Are we building a wall? Joshua, can you imagine one of them looking at Joshua? Joshua, who do you think you are? Joshua, who are you to be building this wall? Who, who, who do you think you are to cross this Jordan now, Joshua? I mean, Moses didn't cross that Jordan. Who do you think you are now, Joshua, to cross over to the promised land? Joshua, who do you think you are? Moses wasn't strong enough to lead the children of Israel over into the promised land. Who do you think you are to lift yourself up, Joshua, to go into the promised land now? Uh, Joshua, what's your plan, your plan of attack on Jericho, Joshua? And Joshua, you know, your plan right here, I mean, who do you think you are to make a plan to go into to Jericho? Joshua, what do you think you're doing, Joshua? You, who, are you, who do you think you are to build a wall? By the way, I don't know uh, about you, but Joshua didn't build a wall. It wasn't his plan. It wasn't his idea. He was just doing what the Lord wanted him to do. He's just standing on the right side of the fence. Uh, we are sometimes, uh, sometimes accused of building walls. Who are, they'll say this, who are you to judge that homosexuality is a sin? Uh, who are you to judge immodesty is wrong and, and unrighteous? Who are you to judge that drinking alcohol is a sin? Uh, who are you to judge that, that you should be faithful to church? Who are you to judge that Jesus is the only way to heaven? Who are you to judge and make a judgment call whether getting a tattoo is right or wrong? Who are you to judge that, that the abortion is a sin? Who do you think you are to say that adultery is always wrong? Who are you to say, say that the person who is uh, transgender, he was born that way anyways. I mean, who are you to judge? God, didn't God create him that way? Okay, this, this is a sermon that's needed, obviously, because we're quiet. Who are you to judge that, the, Pastor, you always say those Jehovah Witnesses. You like to pick on those Jehovah's Witnesses, those poor Jehovah Witnesses. Who are you to judge and build that wall right there, Pastor, that that religion is wrong? Pastor, who are you to judge that rock music is evil? Who are you, uh, bad, uh, Pastor, to judge that a woman ought not be a pastor? Who are you to judge? And then who are you to judge, Pastor, or you, and you fill in the blank? And the list goes on and on and on and on and remember that man who confronted me and he confronted me pastor who are you to judge that that homosexual is, is wrong they're living in a, a relationship with each other and they've been living in that relate they love each other and and boy their their relationship stronger than many christian marriages and and here you are to judge me. i talk to them about christ they believe in christ and uh, they believe in the things of god who are you to judge you're building a wall you're building a wall you're building a wall you're building a wall you're bu by the way who do you think you are building that wall who put you in the place of God to judge right and wrong? 
You act as if you're the high and almighty God. Who are you to judge? You, you, you think you're better than me. You're just a Pharisee. You're just a, a whited sepulcher. You're just a, a high on your opinions, your ideas. You're just high on the, the, the things, the way you want to do things. You're so exclusive. You're so bigoted. You're so narrow-minded. You just think you and your family are better than anyone else. You and Grace Baptist Temple, you're just building walls. Uh, Jesus ate with sinners. By the way, the list continues on and on. If Jesus were alive today, he would get a tattoo. And, and for you to say he wouldn't, you're just opinionated. You're just building a wall. By the way, when they say those things, here's what I want you to say. It's like saying this. If I was to look out there and look at Brother Ryan Hatfield, Brother Ryan Hatfield, and I asked him a, a serious question. Ryan Hatfield, do you still beat your wife? Listen, do you, do you, do you still beat your wife? It's a question that's loaded. It's a question that can't be answered. It's a bad question. It's a bad question. If he says no, that means he used to. If he says I do, it means he still does. It's wrong. Well, better, wrong, that's just, you're a bad illustration. He doesn't beat his wife, amen. But, but it's a bad question. It's a bad statement. We Christians have never built walls. We don't build walls. We follow the Word of God. We're not building a wall. By the way, here's an article I read this morning. And here's, here's the, the introduction. Slew of, now listen, slew of movies about race, class, and transgenderism coming to theaters near you. And then it begins to have a list in this article about these new movies coming out. And here's one of them coming out very soon, Far From the Tree. Uh, also opening July the 20th is the documentary Far From the Tree, directed by Rachel Dretzen. It explores families where the, quote, apple fell far from the tree. In other words, situations where children differ significantly from their parents. Uh, transgenderism or other characteristics. Quote, I described the documentary as a film that turns your assumptions about difference on their head and makes you realize just how many walls we all put up to people that looked and act be and behaved differently. At this moment, for a couple of reasons, it's particularly urgent message. She noted one obviously being our political climate in which difference seems to be reason for people turning away from each other and building walls and silos and all sorts of things to keep ourselves away from those that are different. Anyway, that, that movie right there that's coming out, it's an attack on biblical Christianity. It's looking at you and saying, who are you to build a wall? And it begins to say, hey, who do you think you are to, to lift yourself up as better than anybody else, as better as that person who's transgender, or better than that homosexual right there? Who are you? Uh, are we building a wall? No, 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 we don't build walls. Joshua did not build a wall. He was staying on the right side of the fence. We're not building a wall. We're staying on Jesus' side. We're following what he does. Okay. So we get to that next part. Are, are we building a wall or staying on the right side of the fence? Simple point number two, we're not building any walls. The wall's already been built. The, the wall has been defined by the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not building walls. We're staying on the right, right side of the fence. Who are you to judge that homosexuality is sin? I didn't. I didn't. The wall's already been built. Amen. In the word of God. The wall's already been built. Who are you to judge immodesty as a sin? I didn't. God built that wall already. Who are you to judge that, that drinking alcohol is a sin? Well, the Bible just says wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I didn't build a wall. It's already been built. Amen. Who are you to judge that, that you should go to church? I didn't. The Bible just says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner some is, but exhorting so, uh, one another so much the more you see the day approaching. God already built that wall. Who are you to judge that Jesus is the only way to heaven? Who are you to judge that there, there's many false religions? I didn't, I, I didn't have to. God already built that wall. I am not a wall builder. God is. 
Uh, who are you to judge that getting a tattoo is wrong? Pastor, you don't even say that today because if you begin to preach against tattoos and their vileness and their wickedness, uh, Pastor, who are you to lift yourself up? You'll never read. I'm not called to reach anybody. I'm called to say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And by the way, Jesus already built that wall. It's defined in the word of God that it's wrong. Who are you to judge that getting abortion is a sin? Pastor, don't you know that only 18% of Americans think that abortion is wrong today? I just read that, 18%. Now, if that's true or not, that's sad. It's sad. Uh, but abortion is murder. I don't have to define that. I don't have to build that wall. It's already been built by the almighty God. It doesn't matter if it's popular. It doesn't matter any of that. The wall's been built. Who are you to judge that adultery is bad? Well, I don't have to. God said it is. Who are you to judge that transgenderism is sinful? God created the man and male and female. I don't have to say anything. The wall's already been built. Who are you to judge that the Jehovah Witness religion is wrong? I didn't. They don't follow the Bible. They're, they're going against that wall. Hey, pastor, who are you to judge that rock and roll music is evil? I didn't. You look at the Bible. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. It's already defined by the word of God. Who are you to judge, pastor, that a woman should not be a pastor? I didn't. I didn't judge that. Man alive. Most of the women are smarter than men here anyways. We know that. We're not going to argue about that. But it doesn't change the word of God. That wall has already been built. Who made you a judge? Nobody. I'm not the judge. I don't have to judge. The Lord already made those judgment calls. I'm staying on the right side of the fence. One side of the fence is right. It's built with truth. Amen. And right. The other side of the fence is anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christ. I want to stay on the right side of the fence. By the way, the world calls you. And they'll, they'll look at you over on the right side of the fence with the Lord right there. And they'll begin to say, come on over. You knock it off. Quit being so judgmental. It's better over on this side. By the way, it's not. And you could go to that story of Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 18 where the Assyrians surrounded Jerusalem and they begin to see the people on that wall and they begin to say, hey, listen, come on down. What, what, who are you trusting? You're trying to trust the Lord? Don't trust in the Lord. Don't trust in Hezekiah. You're missing out. We'll take care of you. It's better to be with the Assyrians. And by the way, the, the, if you read that chapter, let not Hezekiah deceive you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. By the way, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure was on the people right there. But praise God, you get a little bit further. And he says, but the people held their peace. In other words, what they said, he says, hey, the wall's already been built. I'm on the Lord's side. I'm staying on the right side of the fence. Now, sermon continues on. Look back at Joshua chapter 1. It's important. And here's point number one. Always stay in the fence of the word of God. The wall's already been built. Always stay in the fence of the word of God. By the way, we have no right to build any walls. We have no right to build any walls. You have no right to build any walls. You're not God. You're not God. We don't write the word of God. We follow the word of God. The word of God is true. The word of God is powerful. You're not the word of God. You're not powerful, but God is. We have no right to build any walls, but we have every right and we should stay in the fence of the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 1. Now the, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua and he begins to build a wall. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. It's found in the Bible 413 times. It's found all over the place. Thus saith the Lord. And then he commands. He begins to build that wall. Always stay in the fence of the word of God. By the way, do you remember? Do you remember? Joshua lived through it. They got to the, the promised land, Kadesh Barnea. They looked at that. They were commanded to go. And they all of a sudden, they began to question the word of God. I know God told us to go in there, but there's giants in the land. I know God told us to go in there, but there's no way we can overcome those giants. Yes, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, there's great big grapes there, the grapes of Eshcol, but we can't do it. The word of God just doesn't work today. Well, you ever heard that? It's a little 
old-fashioned. It's a little out of date, and we're now enlightened now. We're, we're 2018. We have social media where we can find the truth. We know a little bit more today. And that's what the people have always said. But the problem is they should have gone in. They should have stayed in that fence of the word of God. But they didn't. And it's so important for us, stay in the fence of the word of God. Moses didn't go into the promised land. Why? He didn't stay in the fence of God's word. He bowed, he bowed down to the people's pressure. By the way, quit ye like men. Stand for truth. Stand for right. Say as Joshua did, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Why don't we as a church say that? Who cares what another church does? But our church, we're going to stand for truth and right because we're better than everybody else. No, because we have a great God. So important. Stand for truth. Number two, this is important. Verse number five. There, it says this. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Well, pastor, you just don't understand. You're going to stand on that side of the fence, and yeah, he was with Joshua, but you're not Joshua. You're right. I'm not Joshua. I'm Matthew Allen, another son. You're not Joshua. But Matthew 28, lo, He's snoring. <laughs> How do you sleep through that? That's amazing. Lo, I'm with you always. 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 That's a promise from the Lo, I'm with you always. Do you know when you get saved, the natural man, we, we receive the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. He's with you. He's with you. You forget sometimes that the Lord is with you. Remember, he will be with you. Number three, be strong and very courageous. Verse number six, be strong and of good courage. Verse seven, only be thou strong and very courageous right there. We need some men and women who are strong and very courageous. That idea that a Christian is weak is a, a false impression of a Christian. That, that idea of Christian, Christianity being a bunch of weaklings who don't stand. No, a Christian should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We ought to be a strong and of good courage. Another one, don't depart. Verse, uh, verse number eight, uh, don't depart from the word of God. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written there. Don't pick and choose portions of the scripture. Don't pick and choose portions that you like that you don't like. Well, I like this one, but this one I don't like. They, I believe this one, but this is a little bit hard in this generation. No, forget it. They stand for 100% of the truth. That's what a Baptist is, Bible believers. The Bible is our final authority for all matters of faith and practice. We believe the book. We believe all of it. Stand for all of the truth. Well, pastor, it's not popular. Forget that. Just get that out of your mind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is truth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if all the world forsake the Lord. Stand for truth. Then once again, verse number nine, and it's a reminder because we need it. In truth, here's what. We need verse 9. We're so weak. We are so weak. Right. I am weak, but thou art strong. We are weak. That's why we need verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Have not I commanded You didn't build that wall. I commanded thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever Thou goest. Amen. What a good truth. We're not builders of walls. It already built. So when you get thrown that attack at you, it's a false attack. It's a do you still beat your wife question. You can't answer it correctly. Don't even answer. Don't even worry about it. What we're doing is standing on the right side of the fence. And, and we should stay in that fence. God has already built. 
Know you're on the right side of the fence. Don't go over the fence. And then we should call other people to that right side of the fence. That's why soul winning is important. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you.